you picture riding on bumpy dirt roads in a wooden seat attached just above a loud, rough engine? The wind making your eyes water as the loud vehicle beneath you moves quickly at 15 miles per hour? Cars of the 1890s lacked most basic comforts and protections we now take for granted. Open air bench seats, no side doors, not even a windshield to take the edge off, whipping winds and road debris, constantly lashing the exposed driver and passengers. Roofs were certainly absent, leather bonnets offering nominal weather cover only. Leaf spring suspensions, basically bending metal strips, attempted to smooth out rides with extremely limited effectiveness over dirt road holes and ruts. Inside, vibrating body panels and frames created constant rattling travel din. Steering control was far cruder than modern rack and pinion. A basic wooden tiller, arcing left and right, often connected straight to the rigid front axle. Slowing or stopping these motorised wagons relied on crude wooden block brakes pressing against carriage wheels. But the blocks wore away quickly, leaving minimal braking ability on steep downward slopes or slippery streets. Having more power to move also meant controlling all that engine power was temperamental at best. Mixtures for fuel and starting the engine were full of guesses and mistakes. Engines would make popping sounds, spit and backfire if the mixture wasn't right. Even experienced car owners often had their cars stop running while they were turning the gas handles hard, trying to start cold engines by hand. Yes, starting your early automobile was a challenging feat even on a good day. Before easy electric ignition, engines utilised trembler coils and rudimentary batteries sparking at precise internals. But getting rotation and initial combustion meant overcoming compression manually with a starting handle you'd pull out insert, then heave around vigorously by arm strength. If the parking brake didn't hold, sometimes people were pushed aside by the crank handle snapping back when the engine started and the vehicle moved suddenly. Once the engine was running, drivers hoped it would keep running well. There was no speedometer to check how fast the engine was going. They had to figure out how the engine was doing by listening to its sounds, feeling its vibrations and noticing any spitting noises. Early motorists ventured onto city roads shared with bicyclists, horses and pedestrians. Rural areas had worn farm tracks and wagon routes linking towns. Vehicle operation laws were nearly non-existent with very few motorised carriages around in the 1890s. No licences, registration, road signs, speed limits, nor traffic police. Drivers followed informal common sense rules instead. Slower wagons kept right for passing. Drivers signalled turns with their arm. Railroad crossings mandated full visual stops. Night darkness made that doubly vital. Despite average speeds only 25 to 30 miles per hour, crashes caused frequent injuries and deaths with minimal safety features. Judges settled liability claims case by case. Horseless carriages dominated early car development. Traditional buggies and wagons upgraded with small but powerful engines replacing literal horses. Fledgling motors, brakes and suspensions struggled to smoothly control these engine-powered carriages on unpaved irregular roads in the dawn of motoring. Karl Benz earned fame by producing his iconic motor wagon in 1885 Germany. This pioneering three-wheeled automobile with four-stroke engine amazed Europe by rattling along at blistering speeds up to 10 miles per hour. Topped 16 mm later models, Gottlieb Daimler also unveiled an early four-wheeled gas engine quadri cycle in 1892. Fitted with wooden artillery wheels, two-cylinder V-motor and two forward speeds plus reverse, it opened possibilities for self-powered transport on roads. Electrified carriages also joined gas combustion models. Quieter and cleaner but much heavier lead batteries, electric cars provided relatively smooth travel but extremely limited range per charge. Frequent battery swapping was mandatory for longer trips. Stanley Motor Carriage built powerful steam-powered cars, setting early land speed records. Their locomotive-like boilers delivered smooth torque, despite long start-up times and pressure maintenance skills needed. Owning these pioneering vehicles was solely a luxury for the wealthy in the 1890s, given their extremely high prices. Unpredictable upkeep costs and rough, temperamental rides scared off casual joyriders too. Early cars in the 1890s were noisy, shaky contraptions, 
navigating primitive roads that signalled wealth for brave owners seeking mechanical innovation. Car clubs emerged to test vehicle performance and devise etiquette rules as the horseless machines proliferated amidst regulatory freedom. Open roads lacked signs or lanes while primitive bricks and dirt intensified noise, bumps and exposure to weather. Still, driving these unrefined early autos before mass production required daring as they remained hard to control, especially at faster speeds. Yet for enthusiasts focused on tinkering for speed, cars provided new frontiers despite and because of their rugged unreliability. Owning and operating your own horseless carriage clearly still held privileged status that early decade before 1900. While innovators kept building steam, electric and combustion engine prototypes, some brands and models lit fame's fuse for their creators in that era. In 1898, August Horch produced a high-wheeled motor wagon in Germany earning investor interest for his Audi Automobile Company, Latin translation of his surname. By 1899, Ferdinand Porsche designed early hybrid and electric vehicles under the Lohner Mark badge. First emerged in late 1898, British Motor Syndicate released their Phoenix Tricar, priced around £300. Owner enthusiasm soon birthed the Royal Automobile Club to coordinate group outings and lobbying efforts with authorities. In Detroit, Ransom Olds made the curved Dash Oldsmobile popular after 1901 by using interchangeable parts and better production methods. Innovation fever ignited young engineers too. Brothers Francis and Freeland Stanley formed their steam-powered Stanley motor carriage firm in 1902, soon setting world speed records over 127 miles per hour. Ferdinand Porsche himself consulted on early Austro-Daimler models before founding his own sports car legacy. Pneumatic rubber tyres greatly improved stability and suspension versus previous solid frictions rubbers. Quick Carriage Company employed them on their electric models as early as 1893 in the USA. Michelin further improved air-filled tyre designs from 1895 in France. By 1901, Locomobile began fitting their custom steam carriages with rudimentary windshield glass for facial protection from the elements. Enclosed passenger compartments developed from here, making adverse weather and night travel less intensely exposed experiences. Now only drivers remained somewhat soaked and freezing atop the motor in heavy rain. As engines got better, braking systems also improved a little with band-type brakes that created friction against parts of the car that help it move. Parking brakes also helped to keep cars from rolling away. This was a big improvement over the old wooden brakes used on wagon wheels, making it easier to stop. Cars took the place of horses in buggies, becoming faster, more stable and able to go longer distances, all thanks to constant experimenting and new ideas from the first car makers. The real age of driving cars was quickly coming. Even though they were not very comfortable and slow, Cars in the 1890s allowed rich early users to travel farther than horses could. They worked hard on rough early models that quickly changed to allow more people to travel freely on open roads in the next century. Rarely do we see such a big change in society happen so fast because of a new invention. <laughs>